Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Free Flow Friday. Now we're going to talk about things that you shouldn't do after scuba diving. I know we all want some fun stuff after scuba diving, but sometimes we need to think about what we're doing after. So let's run intro. Okay guys, welcome back. As you guys know, my name is Mark. I'm a paddy course director and tech dive. I've been diving for 17 years now and been a dive instructor for over 15. So I've learned a few things over my career, having taught around all over the world. I've taught in Southeast Asia, Caribbean, Bermuda, Europe, and also Australia. So I've taught all around, thousands of dives, and I kind of learned a few things along the way. But also, some are a bit obvious. But before we jump into that, I want to talk about some trips we have coming up, guys. We still have space in our Bali 2023 trip, and we also have two cabins left in our Red Sea trip 2024. These are both going to be epic trips. If you want to come on, join me and Holly on amazing dive trips, where we'll be diving with you guys, taking photos, having a great time together. Then check out our website, the Dive Trips tab, download the brochures, and learn some more. But without further ado, Let's drop into our seven things not to do after scuba diving. Number one, this one is the most obvious. We all know this one, flying after diving. Now, why we are not able to do this is because we have to be aware, and the same with all these reasons we cannot dive, have to be aware of our nitrogen levels and how long we take off after dive before we fly because we've built up nitrogen in our bodies. And as we know, depression is caused by the bubbles escaping solution, i.e. the nitrogen bubbles in our body. So we have to be very aware, that's why we come up very slowly, because we don't want to get bent. Now, same with flying. With flying, we have to consider when was our last dive. If it was a single dive, it's 12 hours. If it's a double dive, normally 18 hours. And we have to be aware if we're doing multiple dives per day, we need to even consider what our dive premier is saying ourselves, giving ourselves even a longer window. Now, in our insurance documents, especially our travel insurance documents, they'll normally specifically say 24 hours. So generally, it's always recommended to leave a minimum of 24 hours. We are gonna have a video coming up on the latest Dan research on flying and diving. But the reason why is because the plane's coming up to altitude, we're lowering the cabin pressure as well in the plane, which can cause the same effect of coming up too fast causing the bubbles to leave solution, causing us to potentially get decompression sickness. So we have to be very aware of that. Number two, climbing a mountain. Now, yes, this is the same thing. We have to be very careful, very similar to airplanes. Now, it's not just going up a height, climbing a mountain. We also have to be very careful driving over a mountain after a dive trip. For example, we have the grapevine, in California, we are driving from San Diego up to LA, and you're actually crossing over high peaks. This is something we have to be aware of as well, because it's the same equivalent, we're going up to altitude, the pressure is dropping, resulting in the bubbles in our body, the nitrogen in our body, exiting solution again. Now, a lot of people don't realize that. The good thing with Californian uh, diving, especially if you are diving down in San Diego, is they do double check you're not driving back up to LA to avoid driving over the grapevine, and running the risk of getting decompression when you drive home. But again, climbing mountains, if you're going to hike, wouldn't really recommend that, but also driving over mountains has the same impact and a lot of people forget about that. Number three, hot showers. Now, if anyone ever dived with us in Bermuda, we mention this all the time. Avoid having hot showers after diving. And you're probably wondering why? I'm cold, I'm salty, I wanna get a nice hot shower. Now it's not recommended to have a hot shower straight after diving. The reason for this is, when the hot water is coming through our body, naturally our body will start pumping the blood through our body faster, but also the hot water can lower our blood pressure as well, which again, causes the same impact of creating dropping of pressure where the bubbles will actually come out of solution again potentially running the risk of decompression. 
I know we all love that hot shower after diving, but just take that time, maybe have a warm shower, or if it's roasting, like in Bermuda when it was, or Australia where we are right now, you might want that colder shower. But give yourself plenty of time before you have a really hot shower. That even goes for hot baths as well. I know, it seems all doom and gloom right now, but we all want to be safe after diving and continue enjoying it. Now, number four, exercise. To be honest, I don't know about you, after a day of diving, I'm normally knackered and don't really want to do a cycle, playing tennis or whatever your activity is after diving. However, you do have to be aware of this, especially after diving. Generally, my rule of thumb, especially when I'm training for like an Ironman is, or a triathlon or whatever I'm doing, a marathon, it is to take around about six hours. It's kind of my rule. Comment below if you have what your rule is. This is my own opinion. I generally take six hours before I do strenuous exercise because we're getting the blood pumping around the body again and the risk is creating that nitrogen moving around faster, resulting in bringing the bubbles out of solution again. Now, what I would recommend is if you are, or one thing to be aware of, should I say, if you are regularly playing intense active sports after, it's probably lesser of a risk compared to someone who doesn't do activities as much and then jumping into a game of tennis because they're on holiday straight off the dive boat. Would not recommend that. Chances of getting decompression is higher as a result. So again, just be careful. Think about your timing after diving as well. Now, number five, we're all scuba divers, so we probably don't mind this much, but free diving. You should not go free diving after scuba diving. That even includes if you're out snorkeling and you're doing duck dives down to say seven, eight meters and coming straight back up. A lot of people forget about this. I've even had instructors who I was working with in Southeast Asia and even Bermuda who completely forgot about this where they would drop down after dive to go wave at something, look at something and come straight back up. You've maybe done two dives. Your body is nitrogen loaded. It's the same thing, you're coming up as a rapid ascent, your body is full of nitrogen. So again, think about what you're doing. No free diving or duck diving when you're snorkeling after scuba diving, because you're running the risks of decompression. Number six. This one is gonna be controversial for a lot of you. I'm okay, Holly's okay with this, because we both don't drink. I know, Scottish person who doesn't drink, what's the chances? but heavy drinking after diving. Now you guys know in the dive industry, drinking is a culture of it. You go have a great dive, you sit with a beer after, that's generally okay, that's normally okay. Drinking in moderation after dives is fine. Excessive heavy drinking is definitely not recommended because when you're bringing all that alcohol content, especially large volumes of it in, what happens is your body uh, trying to break down the nitrogen and, and cause it to exit your body through breathing and everything else will slightly react differently in terms of getting the alcohol out of your body and we could end result in a chemical reaction that could run the risk or something else happening. So it's, and another thing that's about downside of drinking is it causes dehydration and the biggest cause of decompression, generally speaking, apart from PFOs, is dehydration. So again, Yes, have a beer, glass of wine, enjoy a few drinks after diving, but do not do heavy drinking or excessive drinking after diving. I understand controversial because it's a dive industry and it's really common to have a few drinks after diving, but just in moderation. Be sensible. Be sensible, be safe, like you are on dives, be safe after dives. And our final one, which a few people are gonna be like, Really? It's massages. Now, again, like I said with exercise and everything else, think of your gaps between diving. When you finish dive, how long do you do this? The problem with massages is you're massaging the muscles. You're also catching the blood circulation system as well. And generally what can happen is you're relaxing. With the massages as well, you're actually increasing the blood flow normally. So this is something to be aware of as well, having massages straight after diving. Not saying you and Holly don't enjoy a massage or enjoy the spa treatment, 
but think about your timing again after diving before you have your massage. It's just, I know it seems like we're being negative on this, but these are seven things to think about what not to do after diving. And you see there's a theme. The theme is be sensible. Think of your gap between your last dive and your activity or your drive home or your flying or your massage or a few beers. Think about your timing. Think about it. Be sensible because you've come out of an epic dive, you've seen sharks, you've seen rays, you've dived an awesome wreck or a cave, whatever it is. You don't, and you're chatting about it, having a good time, you don't want to ruin the next day of diving or a diving later day because you didn't think about your gap between your dive. So I always say is, consider what you're doing after diving, stay safe, enjoy it. And I really hope this actually helps some of you guys and actually realize there is the considerations we have to make because we want to continue enjoying the ocean. But as always guys, comment below if you guys can think of anything else that you shouldn't do after diving or what you guys do after diving that works for you. Love to hear from you as always. And don't forget to subscribe, share, comment, like, it's free. We make this content for you guys and we really appreciate you guys. Get amazing people reaching out to us time. We've had Sam Moyers reaching out to us, loyal subscriber. We had Brad Welch the other week driving up from Ipswich to grab his tank. I sorry Brad that I didn't get to speak to you too long because I had some customers outside, but it was great to meet you and hopefully we'll catch you again soon. And also Sean Flood sent us an email in today asking about diving by the Bahamas. We're always happy to help you guys. You guys have our email address, ping us an email. We're always happy to help you guys. So love the support. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you guys in next week's Free Flow Friday. Enjoy guys.